Hi everyone, my name is Steven from the Windows team and today I'm going to show you how to get started with Windows 10 IoT Core and the Raspberry Pi 3. So let's jump right in and talk about equipment. The first thing you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi 3. You're also going to need a 5 volt micro USB power cable and a micro SD card. The minimum requirement for Windows 10 IoT Core is 8 gigabytes, but we highly recommend 16 gigabytes. This is the hard drive for your Raspberry Pi, and all of your apps, your files, your storage, and the operating system go onto here, so a little bit of extra size doesn't hurt. The speed of the SD card matters quite a bit. Class 4, Class 5 SD cards don't usually work. We recommend Class 10 SD cards, or faster. We've noticed that the slower cards can take up to four to five times longer to boot, so it does make a difference. The one I'm using today is the Samsung Evo 16 gigabyte micro SD card. And I'll link in the description below some of our recommended SD cards. This one I got for a steal of a deal. I bought on Amazon for $10. You're also going to need a Windows 10 PC. All the coding happens on here and is, and is used to connect to the Raspberry Pi. If you notice there's no monitor, you don't need one, unless you're doing UI application or if you have one handy. It's nice to plug in to see what's going on in the Raspberry Pi, but for this video we don't need it and we're not going to use one. You'll notice that I'm plugged into Ethernet. That's because I'm on the Microsoft corporate Wi-Fi. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for me to actually connect on Ethernet and find my board than it does to connect with Wi-Fi. So if you're at home, Wi-Fi is a perfectly good option, especially because the Wi-Fi is actually built in to the Raspberry Pi. The last thing to remember is Windows 10 IoT Core is free for everybody, so you don't need to buy it. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to get started and build your first app. So I've brought along some goodies, like this breadboard, a resistor, an LED, and two cables. This is a male to female cable that plugs in to the breadboard and to the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to play with your equipment, bring some of these. If you're totally brand new, we recommend you actually buy a starter pack. This is the Adafruit Microsoft IoT Starter Pack for Raspberry Pi 3. You can buy it on Adafruit.com. It comes with a Raspberry Pi, an SD card, and a bunch of hardware that you can play with. And with all of that, let's get started. First, we're going to visit our homepage, windowsondevices.com. I'm going to open up my favorite browser. This will reroute you to our Windows Dev Center. This is our homepage for Windows 10 IoT Core. To get started, click the Get Started button. Next, we're going to select Raspberry Pi 3. We're going to install onto a blank SD card. And we're going to select the main version of Windows. The Insider Preview is for those that want the latest and greatest bits. But we're not going to run that right now. Assuming you have Windows 10, we're going to move on and download the IoT dashboard. I'm going to click Download Dashboard and click Save. This is our installation tool, which will download and install the OS onto your SD card and discover your board when it boots up. The next three steps listed on our web page, set up your device, set up Visual Studio, and write your first app are all written down. I'll be covering these exact steps in this video, so if you're more comfortable with written instructions, feel free to follow those. All right, this is the dashboard. Since we're new, we're going to set up a new device. So let's click up, set up a new device. I'm going to grab my SD card, and I'm going to plug it in to my computer. Takes a second, but now it shows up as the only device. I already have Raspberry Pi selected and Windows 10 IoT Core. I'm going to rename my device to Steve. Our Pi 3. Give it a password. On the right hand side, you'll see Wi Fi networks. These are the Wi Fi networks your computer can see. I'm actually not going to connect to them, but if you're at home, you should. What will happen is once you connect to these, your credentials for your Wi Fi will be stored onto your SD card, and then when the board boots up, your board will actually connect to the Wi Fi network. Accept the license terms of the software and download and install. For the sake of time, we're actually going to multitask. 
We're going to do things out of order and we are going to jump to setting up Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio is how you actually write code and push it down onto the board. But it takes a really long time, about 40 minutes for me to set up. Um, so we're going to kick it off right now. You can actually download Visual Studio from here or if you want, you can open a new tab, go to www.visualstudio.com slash vs. Once you click Visual Studio, you can download Visual Studio Community for free. There's no strings attached, it is totally free. I'm not going to download it, I've already pre-downloaded it for the sake of time. Okay, so once it's done downloading, it's going to start flashing it onto my SD card. It's going to pop open this tool called DISM that's going to apply the image onto your SD card. Now we wait for that. Okay, so now the OS is on the SD card. I can now remove the SD card from my computer and plug it into my Pi. That took about 18 minutes, but the good news is, once you download it once, it's stored onto your computer and it stays there so you don't have to download it again. So here I have my Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna plug the SD card into the Pi. So the slot is right here. I'm just gonna plug it in like that. My ethernet cable, because I'm on corporate network, I'm gonna plug it in, just so you can see, it goes right there. And now I'm ready to plug in my power cable. It's just on the side right here. I'm going to plug it in and it's going to boot. Going back to the dashboard, I'm going to my devices. Now here, we wait for our device to boot. On first boot, it takes a little bit longer. The second boots are much faster. So you'll notice that the MinWin PC has shown up. What's happening is it's booting for the first time it actually needs to restart to install some other components. You'll probably see it go away. All right, so for me, that took three minutes and 10 seconds to boot. If you're having trouble connecting or it seems like nothing's happening, you can try a couple of things. First, you can plug in a monitor to your Raspberry Pi. You'll be able to see what the Pi is displaying um, and if it's installing at all, we have some notifications on the actual monitor that shows what's going on. Uh, the other thing you can do is switch to your ethernet. If your Pi is having trouble connecting to your Wi-Fi network, for whatever reason, maybe you put in the wrong password. Um, Ethernet works very reliably. The last thing is make sure your SD card is fast enough, make sure it's not corrupt, um, and make sure it's enough, uh, big enough so you can get going. If you right click on the device, you can see a couple options. Open in Device Portal, which is our task manager for all things um, IoT Core. If you right click, you can also launch PowerShell for those that want to get um, command line, you can also shut down, restart, copy the IP address, and open a network share. On the left-hand side, we have connecting to Azure, which we're not going to jump into, we don't have time, um, and samples. Now, I call them quick run samples because they're prepackaged and they require no co code to get going. They're a great way for to see what IoT Core can do without having to set up Visual Studio, but where you want to get started coding. So you can see all of the different projects and tutorials online back on windowsondevices.com. So if you type windowsondevices.com and click the samples tab, you can see all of our samples that we have here. A couple of starter ones, like the Hello Blinky server, you can filter them, and you can check them out. So all of them are stored on GitHub, so they're all open source, and we are going to do a Hello Blinky sample. GitHub doesn't allow you to download individual ones, so if we look at a repository of samples that you can check out, we're going to be doing a C-sharp application. You can look at all the code here, but they're all within one repository, which means that if you click samples, you'll have to download all of them all at the same time. Now, I've downloaded them already, so you don't have to go through the download process. So let's go through and run a Hello Blinky app. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my samples. and I'm going to go to my Hello Blinky app. I have C Sharp selected, and I'm going to open Blinky.
Now that it's loaded, we can open some of these and the main code on mainpage.xaml.cs. And we're gonna switch over and I'm gonna show you how to actually hook up Blinky. Now you can actually see there are instructions you can follow with a pinout diagram of where you need to plug everything in. Let's plug in this LED right here. There you go. Um, we're going to create a circuit so that the wires relay the current through the wires from the Raspberry Pi into the LED. So let's follow the diagram to plug everything in. So I'm going to count from the inside. This first one, I'm going to plug that in. Plug it into one of these. Take the second wire and count the pins. So it's six pins from the right on the inside. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna plug it in. And I'm gonna plug it in the same row as my LED. So you can see that it's the same row. It's a little hard to see, but it's the same row. Next, I'm gonna take my resistor. And you can always tell which resistor is right based on the colors. So this resistor matches the resistance that this LED needs. Now there's a bunch listed on our website. Um, and if you buy them, buy the recommended one, which is a 200 ohm resistor with an LED that takes a 200 ohm resistor that'll work. So I'm just gonna plug it in. And I'm gonna plug it in here. So now, you look closely, you can see that it runs from the Raspberry Pi up, it'll go down, the signal will run down, connect to the LED, go through the LED, up through the resistor, and then back to the Raspberry Pi. And that there is how we've properly connected it. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. You can see here when I click Properties and go to Debug. You can see I've already put in Steve-RPi3, which is the name of my board. Once you're ready, you can click Remote Machine or you can press F5. Now it's going to take the app and deploy it onto the Raspberry Pi remotely without me needing to do anything from the Raspberry Pi itself. Okay, so now it's running. You can see that nothing is actually displaying. This might mean that I've actually plugged it in incorrectly. So I'm gonna take this LED and I'm gonna switch it. You notice how there's a long end and a short end. Kinda of hard to see, but I've switched them around. And we're gonna see, hopefully this will start blinking. So now you can see the LED is now blinking. We have our first app. And that right there is everything you need to get started from a brand new board to writing your first app. Thanks for watching. Everything else is listed on windowsondevices.com where you can check out documentation, tutorials, and samples. Thanks, guys.